Hello, welcome to the Counterattack playthrough series. We are back to playing Operation Dauntless. I'm still going through the tutorial scenarios. It's been a while since I have uh, did the last scenario, but I uh, want to get back into this game using my nice brand new uh, mounted map instead of the paper map. Um, so we have um, tutorial T8, which is the 24th Lancers versus Hitler Jungen's Finest. I guess these are the finest and these are the Lancers. The Lancers consist of uh, three British tank squadrons. Each one has a regular Sherman and four Firefly Shermans, the upgunned Sherman tank. And then uh, the Germans have uh, essentially three companies, um, Panzer IV Company, Panther Company, and three sections of Tigers, which I'm calling a Tiger Company. And it's going to be a meeting engagement. We'll see how this goes. Probably going to be pretty bloody. The scenario is four turns long, and uh, the winner of the scenario is the side that destroys all the opposing tanks. So it's going to be bloody. Uh, but if we run out of turns, uh, and that hasn't happened, whoever controls this objective um, wins. So um, as I said, this is going to be a meeting engagement. The uh, British are allowed to set up in these four hexes here, and they have so many units, so we just fill them up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and group all the Fireflies together and then have the regular Shermans um, on their own. We'll see how that works out. And then way over on the other side of the board, um, the Germans have more flexibility. They can set up from this hex down to, um, which I think is 01, down to 11. So I don't know what the deal is here, you know, how, how to play this scenario, but uh, I put the Panthers down there. They're fast. Um, I put the slower Tigers here and the um, the Panzer IVs, which are probably the, as close in capability to the Shermans as any of these um, here. And the British are going to get to go first. They'll probably rush up and try to get in some good defensive positions to try to pick off tanks while they're in the open, if possible. Um, and so my thinking is, you know, these guys will represent a threat as like a flanking force. Um, these tigers, they can come around here if, if there's no defenders or come, come through these roads, you know, try to, try to go a little faster on the roads. And then, uh, these Panzer fours, you know, they're right next to a field so they can jump out into the fields or they can use these roads and get into the, uh, um, dense terrain. We'll see what's going to go on here. Um, yeah. So it's British turn one reset phase. There's nothing to reset. So now we go into the action phase. And as a reminder, uh, the movement is this number here, 12. And it uh, looks like the non-fireflies can go 13. Yellow means they are uh, mechanized or, you know, tracked vehicles. And uh, in terms of movement, uh, field costs one for tracked vehicles, light bookage two, heavy bookage in village three, woods six, uh, Primary roads and railroads, half. Secondary roads, half. Tertiary, one. Um, there's other things probably won't hit up against. Okay, so for starters, uh, I think we're going to move these um, regular old Shermans. Uh, I think I want them to go to the objective hex. Um, can I get that in the screen here? Yeah, so uh, we're going to send them over there. Uh, they'll move as a group, so it's going to be one, two, um, what is this? This is a tertiary road, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then follow the tertiary road, nine. Sorry, the it's kind of a big board. It's hard, to, hard for me to film this when everything's so far away. Um, but yeah, so um, they're just going to cruise right into this objective hex. And uh, hey, you might be wondering, what is that objective flag? What, what the heck is this? Um, that came in the C3I magazine that has the Operation Dauntless um, sort of like some extra optional rules and a scenario generator and stuff. So I thought I'd just use this to remind myself where the objective is. Um, so yeah, so they'll cruise right into there. And uh, as a reminder, during the action phase, you know, enemy units can react to movement, but right now they can't see anything because anything that's not a field is blocking terrain and all these guys are behind blocking terrain. So they can't see what's going on. Um, so I th I'm kind of thinking I want to 
This might be death here. But I was thinking I might want to put some fireflies on these hills to get these guys as they're moving up. Maybe if these keep, prevent these guys from coming around here. Um, problem is uh, the fireflies anti-tank range is six. And uh, that's what a Panzer IV is. But a tiger range, it's um, eight. And let's see, a panther is a uh, seven. It's um, the uh, superscript on this 18 at the top here. So, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw four up there. Yeah, so uh, about these guys, I'm just gonna stack them to make it easier to move for the moment. They have a movement of 12, so they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight and a half, because that is a uh, secondary road. Um, nine. And then, um, let's see, going into heavy bocage costs three, so 10, 11, 12, so they could just barely make it up to here. Now the question is, can anyone see these guys and uh, react? Well, let's do a refresher of line of sight. Uh, we'll actually do it from these guys' viewpoint. So first off, uh, you can always see into the hexes adjacent to you. Okay, so um, that's good. Uh, next, um, there's no like uh, plateau effect like in some games. So um, so even though these guys are set back one hex from this direction, um, they can see into this hex here. So it's not like a blind spot. So you can see through fields infinitely. And uh, since we got some panthers down there, and there's no, um, where are they? Way down there. There's no intervening terrain. Um, we can see them. And sight is, or line of sight is reciprocal. So they can see our hex. However, we are in um, close terrain, which means we're concealed. So um, they cannot see us um, from that point of view. Okay, so uh, then can any of these guys over here see us? Well, um, this is blocking terrain. Anything that's not this light green field is blocking terrain, this is light bocage. You can, from a higher elevation, you can always see down into um, the first blocking terrain. Um, so like, I'm, here, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark, mark this, it's like a fired marker, but I'll just mark like, hey, I can see that. And since I had a higher elevation, if there was someone in there that was concealed, I could see them, because I'm looking down on top of them, I can see them more easily. So let's see here. Um, I can sight right along this hex spine, even though this is blocking terrain. This isn't, so I can I can choose the lesser of the two. Um, and so I can see right down under there, but I can't see beyond those. So um, yeah, and then uh, we go across a field, across a field, blocking terrain. I can see down into that first blocking terrain, but not beyond it. And so that means none of these guys can see me. Um, and clear, I can see anything in this vista over here. So one thing I think I might want to do is try to position some more tanks like over here to try to, like if I were to mark everything I can see, try to make sort of a wall of line of sight so that when the Germans come out, I can be firing on them as they move. Um, anyway, let's get rid of these markers and decide what to do next. One more thing, you might be wondering, um, if you haven't watched my other tutorials, when these guys moved in here, since they can see them and they can see this hex, could they have fired on them as they moved in, like in many games? The answer is no, because they're concealed in these uh, hedgerows. This is very dense terrain and it's a fairly large area. Uh, each hex is, I think, 425 meters or yards. Um, so, uh, yeah, these, these tanks are unseen from moving, but if they were to fire, um, they, they would become revealed or the fire would become revealed. 
but their range is only seven or six, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, they, uh, even if, yeah, if, if they could and wanted to fire, they can't hit those guys down there anyway. So let's go get uh, some more um, tanks here. And I think most of these guys, I'm probably gonna move in groups of two instead of groups of four. We'll see. But uh, I'm looking at this area here. So uh, just a reminder, the Germans over there, we got our fireflies up on that hill. Um, there's another hill here at uh, Le Ho. I'm reading this upside down. Audrou, Audrou, sorry. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move at least two of these guys up here. One, two, three, four, five. Um, I think it was six, seven, eight to go into uh, heavy bocage. Yes, so three to go into heavy bocage. We'll throw two guys up here. Okay, so what we're wondering, okay, what am I doing here? So uh, I said you can always see into the adjacent hexes, right? And then we can always see through fields and then into the first blocking terrain. So I can see into these spots, see over to here, um, see over to here. And since I'm up, uh, up on a hill, if the Germans were to come in here, even though they're in close terrain, the darker greens, um, I can see down on top of them from up on this slope. Um, the question though is this, is this blocking my line of sight? The answer is no. Um, you can always see over an adjacent blocking terrain. So this is adjacent blocking terrain. So not only can I see into it, I can see over it. And then I can see all the way out until it gets blocked again. So um, this, this is a good uh, vantage point here. And there's another hill here. Um, it's very tempting to uh, grab because of the, uh, I can see out, see into these hexes and over into it. So quite a good view of this section here. I'm trying to, you know, basically cover for the Germans from coming in this way. Um, but this is a woods, it costs six to go in with um, tracked vehicles. And yeah, I, just, I couldn't figure out a way to move in there. So we'll have to hold off on that. But um, you know, those Panthers down there, when they get to move, they can use this whole board so, uh, the, you know, they might like swing all the way around here or something. So I want to get some more guys down there, maybe um, to this little village or farm. I can't quite read what it says, but yeah. Let's go ahead and grab these guys to go one, two, three, four. Now we're going to go half movements. Um, five six, seven, now we're back to the tertiary road, um, eight, uh, these are woods, I can't go into the woods with how much movement points I have, so we go nine, hmm, 10, 11, 12, that's not good, that's all my movement, and if, if I were to use the roads and come around this way, uh, that wouldn't be good either, Oh, let me, let me uh, pause this for a moment and see if I can figure out how to get into a good spot. Well, I don't know if this is good, but we'll go ahead and do this instead. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then, um, oops, sorry, poor camera work here, and then... Uh, yeah, do I want to stay there in nine? Yeah, I think I do. I think, um, yeah, I think I do. By the way, this board has like eight sections. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And to fit it on my table in this way, I fold it two under, but you're allowed to use this whole board, so I might have to unfold it depending on what I decided to do with these Germans here. But uh, anyway, we have four more of these guys to move out. I think we're gonna move two of them up onto the, the first hill we went to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's put them here. And then just to prevent like some wide flanking thing, I think these guys, just for the moment, you know, maybe they'll be my reserve too. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And then uh, cutting through light bocage costs uh, two, so five, six. I'll just go here and 
and cover this whole field area over here. All right, well, not so happy with this situation, but uh, you know, we'll see. So um, now for the, that was the British action phase. Now for the British combat phase. Now these guys can't see anything. Now this guy can see over this blocking terrain into this first blocking terrain, so they can't see anything. Um, or hit anything anyway, they can't hit these guys. Uh, even though they can see them. But these guys over here, let's go zoom in on those guys. So the pertinent action we can take during the uh, combat phase is anti-tank fire. And so I could consider having these guys fire on these guys. So let's take a look at the uh, situation. So the, their anti-tank range is six. One, two, three, four. Okay, so they're within range. These guys are seven. Um, their anti-tank strength is 18, and you basically compare it against the enemy armor. So that's 10. So it's a, basically a plus eight die roll, if I remember correctly. And then you subtract um, from your die roll um, each hex. Okay, so that'd be um, subtracting four, and I'm sure there's some other things, but uh, so I need, I'm gonna need to decide if I wanna do this attack. And then um, during combat phase, um, it'll a fire, firing can trigger the arc. That's the armored reaction cycle, which is this like cascading mayhem that can happen. But during the combat phase, each unit can only fire once. We're in the action phase, which is when we're moving. Um, if they're, the arc were triggered, um, you can keep firing infinitely until everyone's dead. Um, but so I'm considering uh, maybe attacking these panthers while they're in the open. Yeah, I think we're gonna do this. Uh, let's check out this chart here. Uh, can I get this into view here? Yeah, so this is the anti-tank fire modifiers chart. So uh, we calculate the penetration, which is our anti-tank rating minus the, tar the target, and that'll be a die roll modifier, minus the target's armor, I should say. Subtract the number of um, hexes firing through. There's some terrain um, negatives, but uh, with the enemies in the field, um, there's no flanking going on. Um, yeah, so uh, it looks like it's just going to be the armor penetration and the range. So um, yeah. let's see if we can get a hit. And uh, we need to roll 14 or more to get a hit. By the way, um, one of my prior tutorials used uh, fire control. That's essentially modifiers for like the uh, equipment and training um, of the unit. For example, this one has a plus four and this one's a plus two. This scenario doesn't use fire control. Um, there's a variant of it that does. I might replay this with that. We'll see. But uh, we're going to roll 2d10. And we got horrible roll. It's not a hit, but just for completeness sake, um, we're firing uh, 18 against 10 armor. That's plus 8 minus 4 hexes. So it's plus 4, so I rolled an 8, and I need a 14. Okay, so uh, I should have picked who fired, right? So we'll just say this guy fired. Okay, and then uh, now these guys can react uh, because even though I'm concealed, because I'm in close terrain, when you fire, you're temporarily revealed. So these Panthers, one of them can fire back, but let me give you another little tidbit here. Hey, can these guys fire back? These Tigers? Their range, intake or tank range is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yes, it's exactly in range, but uh, they don't have line of sight. And here's how I know. So you can see right down this hex spine, even though there's blocking terrain on one side of it, if there's not blocking terrain on the other, we're good. So we'll trace all the way, trace all the way, trace all the way. Ah, we hit more blocking terrain on one side. Since this blocking terrain's on the opposite side of the hex spine from this one, they collectively block line of sight. If that was a field, or if it was on this side, we would see the tanks, but we don't. So, um, but yeah, I see, I don't think I see a reason for these um, Panthers to not fire back. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the enemy is in close terrain though. That's gonna be a uh, minus four. No, it's gonna be a minus two. Um, by the way, it says, in this horrible camera work here, Target in close terrain, minus four. But it's a minus two if fire is through a frontal hex side of a target which temporarily revealed itself by firing. And I don't know if you saw those, te those words, but uh, yeah, this guy temporarily revealed himself, fired over here, which means his frontal 
x's are facing this way. So we can get a, it's a, a little better um, negative situation. So it's going to be uh, 18. We're, we'll fire at the fire, minus 8. We'll go ahead and use this guy. It's 10, minus 4 for range. That's 6, minus 2 for um, spotting, spotted the muzzle flash from this close terrain. So what did I just say? That's 8 minus 6, I think. That's a 2. No, no. 10 minus 6. That's a 4. Rolled 8. That is 12. Not enough to do anything. That was a reaction as part of the armored reaction cycle. You can always react to someone firing. So that means this guy can now react to those firing. Or he can say he can pass and end the cycle, but he still is doing his combat phase, and so he could just fire again. So regardless, uh, I guess I might as well just react as part of the armored reaction cycle. Um, he's going to fire on the guy that just fired. Uh, I don't know if that's enough. Nine. Um, and this was 18 minus 10, so that's 8. So 8 plus 9 is 17. Minus 4 is 13. Just barely missed. Okay, so this guy's done. Now, um, this guy's already fired. This guy's going to fire back then. Okay, let's see. Six. It's not going to cut it. Uh, oops. Uh, yeah. So done, and that's that's the only com combat the British can do right now. So uh, we'll go ahead and process the um, German turn, starting with their reset phase, and um, I'll go ahead and reset these British tanks as well. So I'm just kind of saying, okay, those phases are done. Uh, now for the uh, German action phase. I don't know what to do. Like these guys are sort of bottled up by these guys. They could easily move out of sight though. So uh, maybe they'll do that, but maybe we should go see what's going on up here first. Maybe these guys have something they can do first. So <laughs> it's kind of a hard puzzle here. Um, I'm not sure what the best course of action is, but um, I was originally thinking these guys would come out down here, go try to get some flank, you know, flank around the side, maybe go help down there, but I feel like these guys would just like barrage them from the hills into the fields. So maybe we need to kind of come in through this close terrain and try to pick off these two guys if we can. And so I need to decide, do I want to try using the ti Tigers for that first or the Panzer IVs? Now what's nice about the Tigers, they're not as powerful in the anti-tank um, realm as the Panthers, which is kind of surprising to me, but their armor is better. The Panthers armor is 10 and these are 12. So um, I think we're going to go ahead and move them as a stack. They can only go 11. And let's see, these, these guys here can see into here. These guys here can see over this into here since this is adjacent. So maybe they'll move into here. Or maybe even come around this way to try to see these guys. Um, what can I do here? I can go one and then use this um, road here, secondary road, to go two. No, then I could be seen there. I'm trying to get into here, this uh, heavy bocage, as the first time I'm spotted. So one, uh, one and a half. Three and a half. Sorry, I'm kind of off camera a little bit here. Three and a half, and then six and a half. Yeah, so I think we're going to do that. Let's go one, one and a half, three and a half, six and a half. And uh, I have some marker somewhere. I'm going to mark the number of movement points remaining. I'll put it between the six and the seven on the information track because game plays paused while the armored reaction cycle kicks in which it probably will okay these guys can see them they're looking down into that hex they can see over an adjacent hex into the um, they can see over the first blocking terrain into the next um, they can see these guys um, since they're high higher up than them 
they're not concealed. So yeah, this guy's gonna fire. And the modifiers are um, 18 minus 12, so it's only plus six for armor penetration. Minus two for distance, so that's uh, a total of plus four. And then the terrain is close terrain, and it's gonna be a minus four because these guys have not fired. Only if they fire and their frontal, they're facing, their front is facing the reacting player um, is the terrain reduced to minus two. So uh, I think it's a net zero. Yeah, I think I did that right. Let's see what we got here. Got a six, so that didn't cut it. And actually, I don't need to flip this guy. This is part of the armored reaction cycle during the action phase, which is you can react an infinite number of times. So now these guys need to decide if they're gonna react. Anyone that reacts to firing, um, by firing, I should say, is gonna have to stop movement. But um, when you're fired upon, you have three ways to react. You can return fire, which means you have to stop moving. You can pass and just ignore it and then continue your moving if you want. Or you can do a reaction move, which is a one hicks move in any direction. So uh, that's one way I guess you can scoot by someone is take a shot and uh, ignore it by moving one hex. But we came here to kill these guys. So this guy's gonna react to the firer. Um, that's 16 minus eight is eight. Minus two for range is um, six. And then um, he's in the dark green terrain. It'd be a minus four, except he fire, he's, he's, he's saw him fire, so it'll only be a minus two. Sorry, that's six minus eight is eight, minus two is six, minus two for terrain is four. So we need to roll a 10. And we rolled a 16, that's 20. Boom. So this guy took a hit. I think this guy is gonna do reaction move. So he's reacting to this guy's fire. And uh, this guy sort of dropped out of movement because he fired. So this guy's going to reaction move and reaction move over to here. Uh, out of sight. And then this guy can't react to that guy's movement because he can no longer see him. Now the arc sequence is over. Um, now these guys have, um, looks like four and a half movement points remaining. Or they could just decide, since this is the action phase, to fire. So this guy is gonna fire, he's gonna drop out of movement. Um, and by the way, I'm rotating these guys, but they can all still participate in the arc during the action phase. It's just, I'm just rotating the show like they're no longer eligible to move. So this guy's gonna do a uh, eight minus two minus two, so a plus four attack. Need a 10, got a 10 exactly. Um, this guy's damaged, and I guess his reaction will be the reaction move. Um, okay, this isn't going to go very well. Um, I still have this tiger here. These fireflies can't see into here, because this blocking terrain blocks them, but they can see into here. Ooh, can they see into here? No. Um, even though they can see over the first blocking terrain. Oh no, they can't, they're two hexes away. Okay, so they can't see these guys. So I've decided, is this guy gonna keep moving or is he gonna stay with his buddies? So I'm sort of inclined to not waste movement and have him keep on moving. So essentially the stack keeps moving, but these guys dropped out. So it's a stack of one. If I move here and then here, I can get adjacent to these guys. Their armor anti-tank capability is weaker. I can try to kill them. But the um, problem is, these guys back on this hill, they can see over this adjacent um, close terrain right into this close terrain. So he would be taking fire from them. I don't think it'd count as a flanking fire, but it'd still be, even. it looks like it is, but I don't think it would count. Um, but uh, yeah, so he would be taking fire if they went here I think all of these guys can see into there. They can see over the adjacent guy right into there. So 
then what am I going to do with those guys if I don't move them forward? I think what I'll do is uh, move this guy one more into here. So uh, that's three movement points. So I'm at uh, nine and a half. So I have one and a half movement points left. So I didn't use the road. I just crossed the bocage. And uh, yeah, these guys can't see them. No, no one can see him. That at least gets him in a, a spot where he can maybe do some stuff. Um, he could even go here. No, he doesn't have enough movement points to go there. But he could go here. Um, one thing I'm kind of thinking is maybe I can spend a turn to try to get up into here on this hill. Well, it's not a hill from these guys' point of view, though, so never mind. So, uh, yeah, we'll just go, to, go ahead and call that. So I'll, I'll rotate him to show that he's already moved. And, yeah, what, what are these guys over here going to do? You know, their armor is really weak. <laughs> it's a six. I mean, that's, yeah, um, that's less than a Sherman. So actually, they're, they have more firepower than a normal Sherman, but not more than a Firefly. So they're, they're pretty brittle here. Um, I think we're going to move them through this dense terrain, just try to position them over here. Maybe they can, you know, sort of support these tigers. So um, maybe we'll go half and then one, one and a half, um, three and a half, four and a half, four and a half. Okay, let's move them up there. Okay, I still have a decent amount of movement points left. I could just have them sit tight with this tiger. But uh, yeah, four and a half. Maybe we'll go five and a half. Six and a half, seven and a half. Along this road. Ten and a half. Ten and a half would bring them into sight of these guys. These are fireflies. Hmm. You know what? They're just going to go right in here. No one can see them at the moment. Let's make sure that's true. Yeah, so these guys... Oh yeah, they can. They can see over that. Okay. Uh, okay, they'll hang out with this tiger for now. Being a little overly cautious, perhaps, but these feel really brittle. Okay, and uh, I'll rotate them. we got to go deal with those panthers down there. What are we going to do with our panthers? Well, one issue right now is they cannot see these guys. These guys are concealed. Um, they're, they're not firing. So those panthers have, have to decide what to do. Um, do they start moving in to try to assault? Do they flank around and hope to not get shot as they're moving? I feel like if they move this way, it's not a good choice. Um, they will have these guys firing on them this way, these guys firing on them this way, possibly with flank shots. Um, they could go down this way and try to get around, which means I'll have to unfold the board down there. Um, but you know what? They're in a bad situation. I think maybe the best choice is for them to move in and assault. This brings up a rules question that I can't answer. So if they moved here, these guys can fire on them. They can see them clearly. Where they are right now, they can be seen, right? They already got fired on during the British turn. What if they moved here? So once they get there, these guys can't see them because it is blocking terrain. The fireflies on the hill to the south, uh, I guess it's technically the north, um, can't see them. But my question is, um, when they move to here, can the fireflies fire on them before they get out of sight? And the reason I'm asking is because the uh, rules say um, a movement trigger for the arc occurs when a vehicle moves and an arc-capable unit has a line of sight to the hex where the movement occurred. It doesn't say the hex that was moved into. On top of that, there's this rule of friction fire that, in general, is done against infantry and fields. But uh, basically, you get to choose like which field the friction fire is going against, where you, they're coming out of or where they're going into. 
but uh, I think you have to be able to see <laughs> the target field. So it's just kind of weird uh, ambiguity. So Mark, if you're watching, um, I'd appreciate your insight into that rule. For now, I'm going to say they can move here without being fired at. By the way, they moved from here to here. That means their front facing are these three hexes and their rear facing are these three hexes. So uh, they have their front facing facing the uh, fireflies on the hill down here. And I believe they just came into range. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they are in range. So these guys need to decide if they're going to fire. And uh, since it's the action phase, I'm thinking there's no reason not to, I guess, other than they don't want to be fired back upon. Yeah, I, th I think we'll probably want to do this. You might be wondering why I didn't go the other way, zig that way. Well, these guys would be able to fire on them and at closer range, so they'd only have a minus three where these guys are going to have a big minus for that long range. Um, yeah, and they could just hold their fire too and have to wait for these guys to get even closer. So uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and have this guy fire here. Um, he's going to fire um, 18 minus 10, that's plus eight. And then the range, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the net is a plus two. Rolled a 15, a zero is a 10 in this game, and I rolled a zero and a five. Rolled a 15 plus two, 17, that's over 14. So uh, yeah, we just hit one of these guys. And they get to choose to react as part of the armored reaction cycle as well. So, by the way, uh, it matters who fired, because um, when they react, they could fire back on the fire only, because only he is revealed. Um, but since these guys are all identical, I'm not gonna mark it. Um, but yeah, so these guys can decide, can they ignore? Do they want to do a reaction move, fire back? Well, I'm inclined to just do a reaction move. Um, it doesn't burn movement points, that's my understanding. So they'll do a reac reaction move of, oh, it would only be one unit though. I don't want one unit to do a reaction move. It'd be the, um, yeah, so... Reaction move, move one. A vehicle unit moves when an enemy unit is able to fire on it. Um, oh, that's a movement trigger. Yeah, sorry, just reading the uh, armored reaction cycle flowchart. So yeah, um, the whole stack can't reaction move, I don't think. Here, let me just double check on that. Yeah, the rules say it's only, a reaction move is only um, available to non-phasing vehicle units targeted by fire. Um, non-phasing meaning it's the German turn right now, so the non-phasing player is the British. So uh, the Germans are not allowed to reaction move. So um, they'll just ignore. They're going to ignore. They're going to pass. And okay, then they're going to spend another movement point to move uh, here, I guess. Um, yeah, you probably want to see that. They're now out of range of the hill. But of course, they're in range of these guys. So the British have to decide, do they, can, do they want to let them get next to them first? Um, or do they want to fire on them now? I think they're gonna fire on them now. This guy's gonna fire, and he's gonna fire on the already damaged guy. So that's 18 minus 10 is eight. Minus two is six. So it's a plus six attack. Rolled a 17, destroyed. Uh, since they fired, that's a arc trigger, and uh, these guys are coming up here with the purpose of destroying these guys. They, they got nothing else they can do, right? They they sort of trapped out in the open. I guess that was a dumb setup on my part. Um, so uh, yeah, so this guy's gonna fire on the guy that just fired on him. Eighteen minus eight is uh, ten. Minus two for the terrain. Uh, and I can see the muzzle flash or whatever. Uh, minus two for range, so 10 minus four is um, a six, so plus six. We got 12 plus six is 18, that's greater than 14, hit. Okay, um, we have to decide, oh, and this guy um, can still participate in the arc, but he can no longer move. 
Okay, so now this, now these guys need to decide what to do. Uh, this guy, since he's a non-phasing side, could reaction move out of there. Um, I think this is our chance to try to take out these panthers, though. But man, he's only got ten anti-tank value now. Oh, I just noticed his range is shorter too. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll say this guy, instead of this guy moving, this guy's going to react. So 18 minus, we're going we're gonna to go against the moving guy still, the guy that's still capable of moving. No, it has to be against the guy that fired. So 18 minus 10 is 8, minus 2 for range is 6. Uh, we got a 9 plus 6, 15. Yeah, oof, this is brutal. Okay, so this guy fired. In fact, I should probably get a little helper for me, just to remember. Um, let's say he fired. Okay, so uh, this guy is going to fire back. Um, we're looking at uh, 18 minus 8 is 10, minus 2, minus 2 for range. Um, plus 6. Got a six, six plus six is 12, nothing. This guy's gonna react. Fire at the guy that just fired. It's uh, eight minus two is six. Got a 10 plus six is um, more than 14. Hopefully I didn't screw something up in there, but uh, I, th I think I did this right. Um, yeah, damaged. Okay, what are these Panthers going to do? They're going to keep firing. Their anti-tank strength, tank strength is still, still solid. And uh, this guy fired. Oops. Um, yeah, I think I just have to do it. So it um, doesn't matter. This guy is going to fire at the guy that just fired. That's, again, 18 minus 8 is 10. Minus 4 is 6. Got a 14 plus 6, more than enough. This guy's damaged. Okay, um, doesn't matter which American's gonna fire back, but uh, I guess this will be 10 minus 10 is zero, minus two for range. Ooh, is, we're at minus two. Really, minus two? Uh, okay, so the guy that just got hit, he'll reaction move. He's gonna reaction move uh, back here. Okay, and that ends the arc because he's out of sight. Um, and let's see, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm searching for the other Germans. Yeah, the Germans are way out of, they can't see him either. Okay, so that ends the arc. These guys, I rotated them because they fired during the action phase, um, so they can't move anymore. So um, I think that ends the German action phase. It's good, and I'm going to go ahead and reset all the Germans. Um, normally resetting is done in the reset phase and it really means like your mortars and artillery can refire but this kind of reset I'm talking about is just indicating like all the things that um, units that have performed what the things they're allowed to perform during a particular phase they um, well when the phase is over I don't need to mark it anymore so now we're in the German combat phase and you know what these guys um, I'd love for them to shoot at this guy but they can't He's not revealed. Let's go check out our other Germans. They cannot see anyone, so they can't fire. So that's the end of the German combat phase of turn one. And it's time to move to turn two. Um, I guess we uh, do a victory phase real quick. There's no victory yet. Um, so yeah, we're moving to turn two. And I'm gonna speed it up a bit now um, in terms of uh, not explaining so much. Okay, British turn two reset phase, nothing to reset. British turn to action phase. So uh, first thing, um, I think I want to get these guys out of here and maybe replace them with um, my reserve that I held back. So uh, where do I want to put them? Well, um, maybe we'll, 
let's see, we can go, maybe we'll just sort of pull them back to these trees. I think I have more than enough. One, one and a half, um, seven and a half, cost six to go in there. They're just going to pull back to these trees here. And there's a road there so they can get out of there a little easily as well. And then uh, these guys will move up into their position so um, no one can see them. I know that they can get all the way to here if they need it or even here. So um, we'll pull them up to here and then decide if I want to keep pushing forward. Yeah, we'll keep pushing them forward. And then uh, I'm going to attack. I need to get these guys while they're close to me and in the fields. So this guy's going to attack. Um, so uh, if I remember right, it's like a plus six. Let's see, eight minus, or 18 minus 10 is plus eight, minus two for the range, uh, plus six. Roll a nine plus six, it's 15, that's a hit. This guy's destroyed. Okay, and uh, this is the action phase. Um, so this guy's no longer able to move, but he can keep participating in the arc. Now this guy, he's the non-active player. What am I gonna do? Uh, yeah, this is bloodbath. Uh, he can reaction move out here, but a reaction move, um, let's see, can a reaction move be used as a trigger? Yes, so I can reaction move to here, but then these fireflies up here can hammer them. Um, I could just pass, but then the, this next guy can just fire. You know what, we got that 18 anti-tank. We, we just gotta fire, so we're gonna fire back. Uh, I think this is a plus six as well, 18. Minus eight is a 10. Minus two for range is an eight. Minus two for firing in a, into a, at a guy um, that fired. Um, yeah. Rolled an eight, plus six is 14, just barely hit. Okay, glad I did that. This guy uh, is gonna react. Plus six, we got a 10, boom. Okay, three Panthers gone, man. Um, yeah, that's one, one third of the uh, German force and it's a, a strong third. Let's go see the rest of the British forces. Um, now, I'm not sure if I wanna be aggressive as the British. We might just wanna like force the Germans into our teeth here. Um, these guys, I mean, they, they have the same armor as the other Shermans, so they're, they're okay, even though they're not, you know, they're the weaker kind of Sherman. But, uh, yeah, I think we got these, the Germans in a pickle here. Uh, they no longer have a flanking force. They're <laughs> surrounded. Um, I do want to, like, move these guys out of here. Oh, interesting. Uh, I see the Firefly Shermans, when they're damaged convert to normal Sherman. So I guess, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I'm trying to remember, yeah, maybe the British, each uh, group of tanks really only had one Firefly, maybe? You know, one Firefly and three regular Shermans, so I guess the Firefly was taken out? Something like that. So, uh, yeah, I think, what, do, maybe I even want these guys to stay here, because if the Germans come in here, they can get some nice, you know, close shots. So uh, I think British are like, okay, done with their action phase. Combat phase, well, they can't see anyone, so they can't fire. Now it's the uh, German um, player's turn to reset phase, nothing to reset. Action phase, kind of an, of an idea here. You know, I don't play the, haven't played the game enough to really know when is a good tactic, a good tactic to do. I think this game is uh, pretty deep and you have, you have to fight a lot to learn how to play well. But uh, I think what we're going to do is um, these guys, I think we're going to move out here into these fields. Maybe try to get into a point where we can assault these Shermans. Not just plink away with them with anti-tank fire, but actually assault them. But these guys are going to be raining fire on them. So maybe um, like as they're moving, Maybe this guy will participate in the arc and try to plink away at these guys, allowing these guys to get through. I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
Yeah, let's, let's uh, figure this out. In fact, for starters, I think just this guy is going to move out. These guys over here on the hill, these guys hiding behind the hill, these guys in the objective, they cannot see him. But these guys can. So they have to decide if they're going to attack this tiger. It'll be 18 minus 12, that's a 6. Minus 3, it's a plus 3, plus 3 attack to damage, actually destroy a tiger. These are not two-step units. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Got a 6, so that's a miss. So um, that may have been dumb, but um, yeah, maybe I should have moved the two tigers out instead of this one tiger, but I guess I was thinking he'd come out here and then he'd start trading shots with these guys. He's got a 16 against eight, maybe plus eight, um, minus two for the terrain, so that'd be plus six, minus three for distance, yeah, that's a three. It's a plus three. Was it plus three both ways? Yeah, so uh, we'll do a plus three attack. Rolled a four, so that's a miss. Okay, these guys will fire back. They're plus three. Got an 11. He'll fire back. I just <laughs> got a six. Uh, just gonna see who's gonna get lucky here, I guess, huh? Um, 11 plus 3, 14. Boom. Oh. No bueno, no bueno. Okay, um, this scenario is going to be over pretty quick here. Let's try this. These two tigers are going to go 1, 2, 3. And one of these guys gets to react. It's a plus three. Got a nine plus three is 12, not enough. They're gonna ignore it. Um, they're gonna go three more moves into here. Now, there's a lot of guys that can react, right? These guys can react, these guys can react. So which is better? This is 18 minus 12 is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 10 minus 12 is minus 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, so th this is better. This is a better shot. Still not a flank shot. Uh, they moved this way. They're um, facing, they're rear facing. Let's use these red markers here. It's here. These guys are just front of it, so they're still firing into the front. So yeah, uh, this guy will fire. Uh, that's, um, again, 18 minus 12 is 6, 5, 4, 3. Huh, it's, it's a minus 1. It's a minus 1 because they're not firing in Bokaj. Um, we've got a 13, so it's a 12. Okay. And uh, even though there's all these tanks here, only that one can, only one can react. Um, so next set situation is, are we going to fire back, we're going to do a combat, we're going to do an assault. Those are essentially the three forms of combat, uh, of fighting. Now combat's not good because this guy's combat strength is 6, this guy's 15. Um, so probably going to do an assault, and we had enough movement to do that. That was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, let me just see if I'm going to do an assault. I need to look at the uh, assault modifiers table um, to see if that's better than just doing anti-tank fire. Okay, if I was doing an assault, um, since it's all vehicles uh, in the, the assault, um, we're, we would like compare... Um, how many steps each side has. Like this is two steps, this is six steps. And uh, that would determine um, which side gets to draw more of these uh, tactical advantage modifiers. Yeah, sorry, it's been been a while since I played the game. And so the defender would have an advantage. They'd probably, you know, <laughs> who knows, maybe pull that out, which means they get four shots. So I think it'd be better to just trigger the arc right now. 
um, instead of an assault. So we'll go ahead and trigger the arc. And uh, what I mean by that is this guy is going to forgo the rest of his movement and he's going to fire on this guy. Now that they're adjacent, he can see them. Okay, and so that's going to be a, a 16 minus 8, that's plus 8, uh, minus 4 for the terrain because this guy's not firing, so that's a plus 4, total of plus 4. 11 plus 4 is 15. This guy's hit. Okay, um, reaction fire from this guy. So that, if I recall, well, actually I have to recalculate it. So 18 minus 12 is 6, 5, 4, 3. Um, it is frontal facing still, so um, minus 2, so it's a plus 1. Got a 16, 17, boom, tiger gone. Okay, that didn't work out so hot. Man, those fireflies are solid. So maybe my rolling is, we're gonna do it again anyway. This guy's gonna target the wounded guy. Roll a four, not enough. This guy's gonna fire on him. Got a three. Um, so this guy cannot react by firing on this guy. He can only react by firing back. So hey, why not? Let's see what we got here. 16 minus 8 is 8. Um, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Plus 3. I'll take that. Roll to 10. That's 13. Um, this was a plus 1, if I recall. Um, 14 plus 1 is 15. Boom. Okay, that's not good. Well, uh, I'm kind of thinking uh, fireflies are awesome, especially when they've taken up good firing positions. Um, or maybe I'm just like putting too much stock in the vaunted tigers and things like that. Okay, uh, scenario is basically over, right? But uh, might as well, you know, go out with a blaze of glory. These guys, they are going to. I really want to get into that terrain there, that objective. Oh, I have a lot of steps here, right? So maybe we'll, we'll try to do an assault. We're going to go like this. Firefly is going to fire. Let's hope he gets a poor shot. And that's 18 minus 6 is 12. 11, 10, 9. That's 9 plus 4 is 13. Just barely missed. Wow, lucked out. Going to fire again. It's an 18, minus 6 is 12, 11, 10, 9, minus 4 for the terrain, so it's a plus 5, uh, 18. So one of these guys got hit. Now these guys are moving in for an assault. Um, don't actually move them in. So yeah, we'll go ahead and enter the assault phase here. So we uh, calculate the total steps. There's 5 here. And five here. Subtract one from the other, that's zero. Um, so if the uh, net modifier, this is the tactical advantage procedure basically, and this is the tactical advantage modifier is zero. If the net modifier is zero, the defender gets to draw um, tactical advantage chits, and they get to draw equal to the modifier, which is zero plus one. So I'm drawing from a little jar over here, Let's see what they drew. No anti-tank fire. <laughs> okay, um, I gotta go see what happens then. Okay, well um, now, yeah, so both sides get a chance to voluntarily break off the assault. Um, one side can withdraw, the defender can withdraw, or these guys can just pull back to where they came from. Or they can keep going. And uh, yeah, both sides decide to keep going. These guys don't want to give up the objective. These guys want to take it. Um, so uh, the situation has not changed. So I'm going to draw another chit. Um, attacker and then defender get to do anti-tank fire. Um, what's bad about um, 
the modifier being so low because the forces are of equal strength is that you don't get to choose among many chits. So it's going to be attacker first, defender second. So we get one anti-tank fire attack. Well, might as well be this guy. Um, it's going to be 14 minus, um, yeah, we're going to go for the weak guy. 14 minus 8, that is uh, 6. The range is 0. I believe the range is 0. Um, we'll double check that because we're basically entering the hex. And then um, I believe there's a chance to uh, flank. I gotta go read up a little more about this. Okay, yeah, range is zero in an assault. So uh, yeah, what, what we're looking at again, it's uh, 14 minus eight is six. Um, minus four for the dense terrain. So I think it's just a plus two, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, 11 plus two is 13, that's a miss. Now the defender gets to go. Uh, might as well be this guy, uh, 10 minus 6 is 4, the terrain is also plus 4, <laughs> uh, or minus 4, so we're looking at a 0. Got a 19, boom. Okay, and uh, now neither side chooses to withdraw. I'm going to do another round. Okay, next round. No anti-tank fire. So we'll go ahead and just skip to the next round. So I'm just going, uh, both sides are, are fighting to the death here. No one's um, abandoning the assault. Uh, D, ooh, it's not so hot. Um, yeah, you know, I actually should be recalculating this. Uh, there's five allied steps, but only four um, German steps. So really I should be drawing two and I'm not gonna roll anything back, but okay. So uh, the defender, or the, yeah, the Germans, they will take the D, that means they get one attack. Um, we'll go ahead and do uh, this guy against this guy. So 10 minus four, um, we're in a field. So minus four, it's plus two. Got 18, destroyed. Now at this point, the uh, assault's really swinging in favor of the uh, British, and I don't see any way for uh, the Germans to win um, in this situation. So uh, I think we'll just go ahead and call it. As the Germans, I'm not sure what I could have done. I mean, my, I guess my setup was pretty poor in that I had the Panthers far away from everyone else out in an open field, and so they got pinned down right off the bat. Um, but yeah, this, this is a tough, uh, the British have so many tanks. Um, now there is a variant of this uh, scenario um, where I think we uh, substitute um, maybe some poor quality British units, but then we can use um, fire control where we're uh, adjusting for the quality of the equipment and training of the troops. But uh, I think I understand the goal of this scenario, which is just, you know, reinforcing tank on tank combat. So I think I'm going to move to the next tutorial. So uh, I'll catch you next time for that.